For those who might be unfamiliar, this is Robin Bullock. He's a televangelist, and he made some absolutely wild claims recently, okay? He claims to have opened a portal through which, what, uh, angels can fly and, what, a portal to heaven or something? Like, I don't know. I don't know. He's a prosperity gospel preacher and a faith healer and the whole nine yards. Just listen to what he said. He did this appearance on this woman's show here. She's also a televangelist. This is Drenda Cassie, I think. She just won commissioner of Ohio, I think. Anyway, listen to this. By the way, this video is recent. It's Baal worship. So we've come down. See, that day we called down. Uh, I said, Lord, send the fire, the Elijah moment. Mm. Then this portal forms over the White House. Dude, okay, there's a whole story behind this portal that I want to tell. Roger Stone actually introduced this portal to the world in an effort to entrench himself firmly in the evangelical world and garner their support. He brought this piece of propaganda to the evangelical world about this portal. And it was not portrayed this way when it was first presented. So Robin Bullock, keep this in mind. Now, he's claiming to have created this portal above the White House, right? Just remember that. Keep listening here. A moment. Hmm. Then this portal forms over the White House of fire. And it's over it now. And they, they don't want anybody to see that. It's a portal of fire. Hmm. And, uh, but it was there. And, and I guess it's still there. It was there. And it was their own cameras that showed it. And people couldn't get over it because it, in the daylight, it was like a round circle. And at night, it looked like an orange moon surrounded with a white mm. circle. And then this fiery storm over to the side. Tell me about what is that portal for? What's the purpose of that? Yeah, you opened this portal. Why would you open this portal? And what did you open the portal to? Quick interjection. This won't take long. If you like what I do, I'd appreciate it if you watch the video to the end. YouTube bases video reach off of watch time, so watching even an extra minute makes the video go further. Liking and subscribing goes a long way, too. Finally, it would be awesome if you guys checked out my Patreon. All links are in the description, of course. Okay, back to the video. Well, we call. I called for fire, like Mount Carmel that day. Hmm. Okay, if you don't know what he's talking about with the calling the fire and, and all that, there's a story in the Old Testament about a guy named Elijah, and Bullock claims to have the Elijah anointing. So Elijah was a character in the Bible who's very close to God, and he was a prophet. He's prophetic. He would prophesy things that were going to happen, and he would, you know, he was heavily revered within his religious community, so on and so forth. Well, he set up this scenario where he set up two altars, one altar to Baal, one altar to Yahweh, and he got the Baal worshipers down there and said, you pray for as long as you want, say or do whatever you want, whatever it takes to get Baal, your God, to light your altar on fire, and I will pray and do mine. So you go first. And the Baal worshipers prayed I think the Bible says they prayed for 12 hours from midnight all the way till noon or something like that, and nothing happened. And then Elijah prayed, and it lit both altars. Like, fire came down from heaven, from the sun, I guess, and, and hit the altars and lit them both up, uh, leaving everybody there completely uninjured, of course, because fire from the sun isn't hot at all, apparently. But anyway, that's the story. So when he talks about having the Elijah anointing, it means he believes himself to be a prophet of God. If he talks about Elijah in any context, he's talking about creating a portal of fire or whatever from heaven. Uh, oh, yeah, and it happened on Mount Carmel, by the way. This is that. Well, we call, I called for fire like Mount Carmel that day. Hmm. After that, it formed. Like, why did he call for fire? And did he have an altar set up? But there is a corridor. Uh, see, dem demonic spirits can't open portals into heaven. Okay. Demonic spirits can't open portals into heaven. All right, go on. But they open them through time. Or trying to build a tower, right? Tower of Babel. That's yeah. what that was about. Mm -hmm. and I'm so lost. What does a tower have to do with opening portals through time? What? It was about, and there was a lot to that tower. But what you saw is a corridor open and a battle over a portal. Over this nation. Okay. 
So that happened. Now, let me talk about the origins of this portal. Robin Bullock just flat out claimed that he opened this portal above the White House, like Elijah, thus proving he has the Elijah anointing, okay? Let's look at the original clips. So the last video we just watched, that was from late March 2024. The, the next videos we're going to watch here with Roger Stone, they're all from April 26th, 2022. So a couple of years ago. All right, listen to uh, what Roger Stone had to say. There is very clearly, in my opinion, uh, some kind of satanic portal that is right above the White House, can be seen day and night. Let's it's play that little clip because this is... Quick note before we continue, I want to let you know I just wrote a book. If you want to check it out, owenmorgan.com slash book. It's a book about my experiences within Jehovah's Witnesses. It's completely understandable if you know nothing about Jehovah's Witnesses. And if you're a Christian, it's a good reference to use for why Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong about their interpretation of the Bible. The last chapter of the book is 100 questions that I have for the governing body. I'm selling the last chapter separately as its own separate guide, if you guys want to get that too. So check it out, owenmorgan.com slash book. I'd appreciate that. By the way, if you don't know who Roger Stone is, he worked for Richard Nixon. In fact, he has a big Nixon tattoo on his back. Famously, uh, supposedly involved in Watergate. Uh, Roger Stone was. And when he was running or he was involved in the campaign, I think it was a campaign for Nixon against somebody else. I don't remember. Anyway, he was he's kind of a political strategist or whatever. He created a company called the Socialists of America or something, and he made the highest possible political donation that one can make, like ten thousand dollars or whatever to his political opponent or his, you know, he's a political strategist. So his political candidate's opponent, he made that contribution from socialists of America and then slipped the receipt to the news. Look, socialists of America support my opponent right now. So you should vote for me instead. That's the kind of slimy, sleazy thing that Roger Stone used to do back in the day. Seriously, he did that stuff. That, that's a real thing that he really did. He'll do whatever it takes to win an election or to whatever. He worked directly with the Proud Boys the day or what day, one day, two day, three days before January 6th happened. He met them in a parking garage. The Oath Keepers leader, Stuart Rhodes, the leader of the Proud Boys, either Enrique Tario or Joe Biggs. Enrique Tario wasn't actually at January 6th, I don't think. Maybe maybe he was. Or I think he was orchestrating things from elsewhere. And got time for that. Anyway, he met all of them in the parking garage before January 6th happened to plan out what was going to happen. He also received hacked materials from Russia through a Russian hacker named Guccifer 2.0 and released them publicly and everything else. He got sentenced to a whole bunch of time. What was his sentence for? I forget now. Not just charged, not just convicted, but sentenced. And then Donald Trump commuted his sentence. He erased it. He said, you're out of it. You can, you don't have to sit in jail. Just go home. Don't pay for the crimes that you committed. This is an article from the New York Times. President Trump commuted the sentence of his longtime friend Roger Stone on seven felony crimes on Friday. In a lengthy written statement punctuated by the sort of inflammatory language and angry grievances Characteristic of the president's Twitter feed, the White House denounced the overzealous prosecutors who convicted Mr. Stone on process-based charges, blah, blah, blah. Looking for what the charges actually were and what, what his sentence was. I think it was seven years. I believe that's what his sentence was. It was real. Yes, uh, Mr. Stone was sentenced against a backdrop of upheaval at the Justice Department not seen for decades. Four career prosecutors recommended that he be sentenced to seven to nine years in prison, citing advisory sentencing guidelines. After Trump attacked the recommendation on Twitter, William Barr overruled it. Trump then publicly applauded him for doing so, even though the attorney general said he made the decision on his own and criticized the president on television for undercutting his credibility. Oh, my God. The prosecutors withdrew from the case in protest 
and one quit the department entirely. At Mr. Stone's sentencing hearing, Judge Amy Berman Jackson of the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia called the situation unprecedented. Without naming him, she suggested that the president had tried to influence the course of justice by publicly attacking her, the jurors, and the Justice Department lawyers. Anybody surprised by that? This was uh, this article, by the way, it was written all the way back in 2020, July 10th, 2020. So anyway, it was a few months before the election took place. Point is, Roger Stone is a professional scumbag. That's what he does. He does scumbag stuff for money, if you are unfamiliar. So now he's trying to ingratiate himself with the evangelical movement and claims to have found a portal above the White House. Because this is from a sky cam, not our cam. It's one that's permanently mounted, and this was recorded from that three or four months ago. And it's, I don't even know if you've seen this version of it, Roger. Three or four months ago. Why don't, why didn't you just show us the current feed? Just give us a live feed so we can see. Uh, but it's pretty amazing there. I'll, I'll set it up for a second. There's like, where the hell did you even get a feed from three or four months ago? This is a live feed. Who was recording it for three or four months exactly? You know what that screams to me? It screams edited, edited footage. A cloud-like reddish thing with blinking lights in it. And you go, what is that? And then there's a moon-like thing. It looks like the moon or the sun behind a haze. And it's neither of those. That moon-like thing remains to this day. Moons, the moon moves. This thing doesn't move. So it's a, so uh, I'm going to just have the team play that real quick. So go ahead and and play that, Emily. So this doesn't have sound, but you see that thing, it looks like a sun behind the clouds or the moon. That has been there for months. In okay, I don't know what he's talking. He says this footage is months old. I have no idea if this is real or edited or what. I haven't seen real footage of this as far as I can tell. And for the record, this this cloud like you can't really see because my mouse is small hang on let me see if i can blow my mouse up this right here that i'm highlighting with my mouse it's like the this cloud type of deal here this is an artifact from compression probably a compression artifact or that's what it looks like but you know in retrospect watching this i'm wondering if the purpose or the reason that this is even in this video is because it was like edited in the the weird circular moon type of deal and they wanted to make it look like the footage was lower quality because higher quality it was very very clear that it was fake and photoshopped in the sky now this is a camera you see some refractal things as this zooms in Dude, like look at they are right now they're taking a photo of i'm sorry they're they're taking a camera and looking at a live feed, like looking at a TV, which is playing a live feed. Why are you doing that? Why don't you just grab the feed? What Can we just go to the website and look at it now? I don't believe this for a second, like any of it. See some refractal things. As this zooms in, you'll see the moon-like thing. It looks like almost the sun. And then you see that red cloudy stuff. And you see the lights within it. It's called compression artifacts. And and I, I showed this to Robin on the air. It's literally, I don't know the date we showed it. And wow, look at those flashes. And I said, Robin. Ugh, this is so stupid, dude. Those are compression artifacts. So if you're unfamiliar, you, you don't know this field very well. Basically, if you have a, a letter that you wrote to your your spouse and it's like 10 pages long and uh, each page that you want to mail to your spouse, it's going to cost like 33 cents per stamp for per page. So you want to bring it down to one page, but it's 10 pages, right? So you put one page in and you include a little note that says every time you see the character, the at symbol or the pound sign, like the hashtag sign, that means I love you. And you put that in the, the envelope, you seal it, you put two stamps on, put it in there. And now when she, your spouse grabs it, she can just write it all back out. And anytime she sees like the hashtag symbol, she puts in I love you. And now you've got 10 pages of uh, letter again. So you're saving money, you're saving like information was preserved 
but it was decreased dramatically. That's how compression works, basically. The problem with computers, though, is that it looks for patterns, and anytime it finds like a big pattern that's common, like for example, it sees a lot of um, you know black here, for example, it will compress it all and, and say, okay, anytime you see a pixel that's within this range, assign it this value. This is the key for that. And it goes through and does that for all of the pixels, basically. This is, that's how compression works. And on the other side, when you unzip it, that's how live streams work. When they send the data over to you, they compress it first because it'll be faster if they do. They send the data over, your computer decompresses it. A lot of the time that takes like a really, really high quality camera and a high quality internet connection. And it creates artifacts because the compressor or the decompressor doesn't get it perfect every time. In fact, it makes a lot of mistakes, especially if the camera isn't that good in the first place. So in my opinion, I think that they're trying to cover up this Photoshop job that they did for this video by adding fake compression artifacts. That's just the way that I see it. I don't know. Tell me if you think so in the comments, but keep listening here. I said, Robin, is that, what is that? Is that good or evil? The portal is real. It's amazing that the whole occultic world, Steve, knew that on 2-22-222, a portal was going to open. 2-22-222, what? The whole occultic world. And who is the occultic world exactly? Am I part of the occultic world? What does the occultic world do? Do they have like a board of directors, the, the occultic board that makes decisions for the occult or whatever now that's all they talked about they said it uh, who is they who's he talking about right now they said it was going to open they uh they were going to use this portal and so forth i want i want to tell you something about that portal that you that's interesting so the occultic world had been talking about this portal for a long time that they were going to use this portal and so on and so forth right what an interesting thing to say. And now here we sit with Robin Bullock talking to Drenda Kissy, new commissioner for Ohio or whatever, county commissioner, I'm not sure. And he says this. It's Baal worship. So we've come down. See, that day we called down. Uh, I said, Lord, send the fire. The Elijah moment. He's claiming to be like Elijah here. Then this portal forms over the White House. And this is literally just a screenshot from what the video that we were just watching a second ago. In fact, it even like they circled it in the video that we we're watching a second ago. This isn't even his circle of fire. And it's over it now. And they, they don't want anybody to see that. Who's they? And uh, but it was there. And, and I guess it's still there. It was there. And it was their own cameras that showed it. And people couldn't get over it. Because it, in the daylight, it was like a round circle. And at night, it looked like an orange moon surrounded with a white mm. circle. And then this fiery storm over to the side. Tell me about what is that portal for? What's the purpose of that? Because he created it, you see. Well, we call, I called for fire like Mount Carmel that day. Mm. After that, it formed. But there is a corridor. Uh, see, dem demonic spirits can open portals into heaven. Wait, so he's saying that this whole time he knew, apparently, demonic spirits couldn't have done this. It had to have been what he did, right? He had to be responsible for this. But they open them through time. I, okay, we're lost in the weeds. I have no clue what he's even talking about here. Anyway, keep listening here to him talk about how this portal is really secretly evil. So March 2024... He created the portal, and it's like a portal of fire or something. April 2020, uh, 2022, I think. April 2022. It's evil, and he doesn't know what it is. And oh my God, Roger Stone's bringing this portal to us. I'll tell you something about that portal that you just saw. Oh, see, that. you see the portal, and then you see the, all the, the cloudy flashes and all. You mean the compression artifacts, yes. Beside yeah. it, all of that going on. And it's amazing that Roger's on during all this because, see, the political realm is where the, the forces of good and evil come to fight. 
because I don't even know what that means. That sounds profound, but it's complete garbage. That's the realm when they come together in that political realm like that. That's the realm that governs the affairs of men. Knock me over with a feather. Really? You don't say politics governs the uh, governs the affairs of men. Is that what you're telling me? See, we wouldn't know these things if we didn't listen to Robin. I'd be completely in the dark about what politics was for. I thought it was so that people could use jump ropes. It's brand new information to me. And so there's always a fight of spiritual entities in a political realm. It's always there. It's because whoever controls that controls people. Dude, what the hell is he even going on about? Does this make sense to anybody? Okay, so listen to this next one. This is just like a couple minutes later. Give me a couple lines of a prayer, Robin, that would say how to pray to close this thing. Because if Right, because they want the portal closed. It's evil. They've determined on this live stream the portal is evil, and it needs to be shut down. So Robin's going to give us some lines of a prayer that everybody watching should be praying to close this demonic portal that apparently opened to heaven of people hear this what would they say to pray what would they need to pray satan is only afraid of one thing remember this uh, faith begins where the will of god is known uh what faith begins where the where the will of god is known that doesn't make any sense that is a nonsensical statement you can't just take words and put them next to each other and expect them to mean something. Faith will start where you know the will of God. That's yeah. where it begins. That doesn't make any sense. So we have to stand up and quote the word, like Philippians 2, 9, 10, and 11. Jesus has been given a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay, isn't this just a normal prayer? I thought we were trying to close this evil demonic portal to heaven. Father, now you spirit of hell residing in that portal trying to get through then to this earth, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I, I deny your access to this planet. You cannot come through it, and you have to bow your knee to the name of Jesus. Okay, so I guess back then, two years ago, it was a portal from hell to earth but now robin bullock claims it's a portal from earth to heaven and it couldn't have been demons that opened it because they can't open a portal to heaven only robin bullock who has the elijah anoint anointing is capable of doing so he's just lying right this is just a flat out lie this isn't like mental illness this isn't an example of him being a QAnon -er. this isn't him nothing none of that this isn't him misinterpreting anything or thinking that Trump is like listening to his live streams because he believes that Trump does watch his show seriously. This is Robin Bullock lying. He knows exactly where that portal came from and who came up with it and all that other junk. And he also knows that that portal is not visible today. At no point in time could Robin Bullock ever pull up a live stream and see a visible portal quote unquote or any kind of artifact at all dude is taking footage seemingly from roger stone and assuming it's real now you're talking about something that can actually stop him awesome if you're just awesome. going to get on the ground and beg god to do something forget it he's already done it you gotta pray we with have, a, you're, you're saying you gotta pray with authority not just hey uh, it says this and i'm praying you gotta Wait, does anybody ever say, uh, it says this? I've never heard anybody pray that way. Demand and declare and prophesy. With his word. Yeah, and his, his name. Word. Okay, wow. These people are seriously ridiculous. Oh, here. This is the picture straight out of the thing. Like, from the video from uh, late March 2024, he copy and pasted this picture to show as an example of his powers, what he's capable of doing. He's so powerful that he can open a portal to heaven, I guess, or whatever. There is that there. circular thing. There you can see it. Uh, it's very, very clear. Uh, it doesn't move day or night. It's harder to see during the day, but you, you see it at night. 
uh, and uh, I'm absolutely convinced uh, about the inherent, there it is again, about the inherent evil of what's going on. In, oh, it was evil back then. In the White House, what's going on in the country. And I think it's imperative uh, that people know about this, that people of good faith, that Christians know about this, and we begin uh, a national, essentially a prayer assault to close the portal. That's good. Now, there's portal. one during the day that... It no, it's not. This is a picture of night. Yeah, I can see stars. What do you mean during the day? There's one during the day that it's harder to see. But that's yeah, but you can the, see it. It's, it's mm -hmm. there. It's right there above the... No, that's an artifact. These people are the biggest jokes alive. White House. So it's always uh, above that gable. You notice yeah. that? Oh, no, he's reading into it. Okay, well, I mean, honestly, I knew he was going to formulate conspiracies about it, but I, I didn't see this one. I did not see this one coming. Robin Bullock claiming to have created it himself. That that one took me, that threw me for a loop for sure. Oh, it's it right is. above the gable. It is. Now, Roger, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you're talking about prayer, that it needs we prayer. We have to close the portal. That's what this is about. We now, mm -hmm. as Christians, our obligation mm -hmm. is to close the portal. Which and when somebody shows up to D.C. to see if the portal is there, they're not going to see one. So guess what? The prayer worked in their minds. They're going to believe that the prayer warriors won another round against Satan. Insane. You know, like, again, this is just a, an, an example of Robin Bullock flat out lying, right? I, I don't see any other explanation for this than he's lying, intentionally, knowingly lying. Like, he came out after claiming that Trump is going to win in 2020 and then being proven unequivocally and beyond a shadow of a doubt wrong after being proven a false prophet he got mad oh my god was he mad oh he's yelling at people and everything on on air this is um mid-november 2021 immediately after he realized that trump lost apologize go ahead and apologize well no how about that? Just so you can hear me again. No. Oh, I'm sorry. This is actually a year after Trump lost. One year. Almost to the day, probably. Because you are wrong. If this had no meaning to it and no prophet standing speaking today was, <coughs> if they were all wrong, why don't it go away? I mean, it, it has gone away. It's just like this dude is keeping it alive. How come it hasn't ever faded away? Because he won't shut up about it. How come it's still a fight over that election? It's not. If it was wrong and it wasn't true, then why are we still debating all of this? Folks, it would have already passed. You keep your doctrines. You keep your doctrines, but I'll tell you what, you are going to answer for trying to regulate the Lord's prophets. Like, I, I love that he's doing absolutely nothing with these books. He's picking them up and placing them down again and moving them from place to place and then putting them back where they were before. I just, it's really entertaining to me. You keep your doctrines, but I'll tell you what, you are going to answer for trying to regulate the Lord's prophets. You, with your big educations you're going to answer for trying to regulate a prophet of the lord and telling a prophet of the lord that what god said is not true but what you said is true you're in trouble you're in trouble now yeah i'm shaking in my boots here so the point is robin bullock is a liar can how can i possibly like look past what he just did with that portal thing how can i possibly believe a word out of his mouth moving forward how can i believe anything that he says after i watched him like on air two years ago talk about this portal being evil and how we had to pray it away and demons opened it into the earth and blah, blah, blah. and now he's on televangelist tv shows claiming he opened the portal how can i take him seriously how can i trust anything he says moving forward I knew that the guy was a liar, but I 
honestly don't know how you move past this. Like, is there another... There is no other explanation beyond he just straight up lied about this, is there? Anyway, tell me what you think in the comments. I, this dude is just completely full of it.